I'm an interaction designer, and while my work typically involves user interfaces, I also like to look at cities and how network technologies are changing our urban experience. Every now and then, I also engage in interventions where we explore different models of citizen participation. Now, living in different cities over the years, I always found it fascinating to see communities tackling their very local problems in the most creative ways. And it was through guerrilla gardening, backyard cinemas, block parties, and all those great things that we call tactical urbanism that I fell in love with the city and its possibilities. But still, moving from the Austrian countryside to the city in my early 20s, I also realized that the social codes I learned when I grew up on how to act in the neighborhood didn't fully apply. Lots of unknown people, neighbors change all the time, feeling unsure, and who wants to be bothered with my friendly, naive approach anyway? Now, of course, as a young adult, I didn't care too much. I highly enjoyed the anonymity of city life. But growing up, having a family, I started to miss the advantages of easy neighborly help. And my example is always, I have a dog, and I need to find somebody to walk her quickly. And I know some friends might do it, but they live in different parts of the city. But my apartment building could be full of potential dog lovers. But if I don't know anyone, do I really go around asking? <laughs> Maybe some of us would, but there are many good reasons why we don't just go over and simply knock on our neighbor's doors. People have reservations. Maybe we don't want to bother others. Maybe we feel uncomfortable approaching a stranger or even asking for help. We have different rhythms of life that prevent us from bumping into each other. Meeting new people takes energy, and sometimes we just have no time. But shouldn't we all be connected through the internet? Haven't globalization and digitalization brought us already closer together? Aren't we overcoming physical boundaries with online networks and social media? Well, yes, we do. I checked. And over the years, I've gathered hundreds of friends on, and followers on Facebook and Twitter, etc. And those networks are great. They do come with their own set of problems, like privacy and lock-in effects and so on. But Overall, they meet my integral need to connect and to communicate. So, here I stand. It's 2015. I live in a global, all-connected village. We are talking about the Internet of Things, and I still don't know the people who live under the same roof as I do. And suddenly, this extensive network, lovingly curated, spread across different countries and continents, is of, no of, of no use here anymore. But my dog still needs to go for that walk. So, I found it strange that there's a group of people who can potentially help each other out, who share something important and intimate even, the same street, the same corner, the same house even. They are totally unconnected. So maybe we should take this idea of a social network and apply it to an urban neighborhood. And maybe it's time for technology to play one of its strengths and help us bypass these difficult first encounters. Because in this day and age, we are so used to communicating digitally that it feels just easier to text someone online than to go over and ring their doorbell. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that technology will save us all. But I do think that Sometimes, under certain circumstances, these systems can help us build initial bridges. So, one and a half years ago, a group of funny-looking people came together to give this idea a serious try. And we founded a social network for urban neighborhoods called Frag nebenan, which is German for Ask Your Neighbor. And 
We launched a service for all of Vienna in, in early January this year, and over the last month, more than 10,000 neighbors joined, which still sounds unreal to me. Of course, when we first set out, we asked ourselves, now, how could this work? What would make a good local network? How would we design it? How can we apply and ensure a human scale to it? So we came up with some design principles or guidelines that I want to share with you now. We picture Fragnim on like the view through your window into a busy neighborhood. That means at first we take the perspective of the individual to make sure that such a digital tool is built around the actual needs of the, of the citizens of the problems that we are trying to solve and not those of city government or a technology provider. Our first important principle is proximity. We are limiting such a local network to the geographical size of a walkable neighborhood. So that means every person in it is at most a 10 to 15 minute walk away. What this means is there's no need to be overly cool because there's no competition in numbers of followers or friends. And what this also means, more importantly, is it lowers the threshold of actually giving and receiving neighborly help. And I have an example here from just two weeks ago where a lady is asking for help transporting her new bed because her car is just too small. And over the course, a couple of hours in a day, neighbors respond and say, yeah, I'll help you. I have a car. And one guy is even saying, I don't have a car, but I can help you carrying, but I have to stay in range of my baby phone. It's amazing. Another principle is diversity. Diversity is what makes a neighborhood great from all kinds of residents and citizens, local businesses, NGOs, citizen initiatives, property managers, and city departments. They all play an important role in the dynamics of a neighborhood. So we believe that all of these actors should also be able to participate on the platform as well. And what this does is it totally breaks your filter bubble because you're in the same space with people who have completely different backgrounds and that emerging social friction does not get ruled out. Then we have interactions. So once your network is populated, what kind of interactions do you want to enable? And here we took inspiration from good placemaking and thought, just like we would design a good place, we didn't want to create one master plan that predetermines every possible interaction in it. Instead, we wanted to create a space for people to communicate, to arrange and adapt themselves in. And we can then observe what people actually do, what they want, talk to them, and build functionality to support their needs. That also implies that we have no idea where we're heading. Because just like a city, such a service is probably never finished. We live in permanent beta. One of our first observations is pretty clear. People want to meet offline a lot, all the time. So organizing community meetings will soon be among the more specialized functionalities we will add to the platform. OK, let me summarize that. If I join a local network like Fragen eben an, I can instantly communicate to a couple of hundred people who all live a mere 10 minute walk away. So next time I need to find somebody to walk my dog, it could look like this, where a lady is asking the exact question. Also an example from just two weeks ago, and again, over the course of a day, a couple of those respond and say, yeah, I love dogs, I walk your dog, I had a dog. So, Problem solved, more or less. Now, taking a step back, how does that fit into a bigger picture? By now, I think we have identified cities as both major troublemakers, big drivers of climate change and so on. Also, the places where we can potentially find and install solutions to all our problems. But speaking honestly, when I look at the amount, the complexity and the scale of all the crises we face, I mostly feel helpless and paralyzed, and I don't know where to start. But what I do know is that if we want more sustainable and resilient cities, we won't find that one solution. We have to try a broad mix 
of ideas and prototype our way forward. And we don't need to focus too much on technology because it's not about technology. It's about connecting people. And in the end, that's what we hope to achieve with a local network like Fragen eben an. Increasing social capital, building trust relationships, creating a dense network that help us realize our potential. So next time you feel really courageous, maybe invite your neighbors over. Thank you. <laughs>